Hey there, it's Garbro again. You know why you're here, so let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? Journal Entry 35 It's been a few weeks, I think. I learned to block it, the noise, them. From then on, it's mostly intuitive. The advanced tricks come later, so they say. Having a logical mental grasp of things has certainly helped. They said I was their first other planner wild talent. Already I learned to decipher the feelings. Empathy, I guess. It's created other side effects. I have trouble nearing the slave market. It's a literal pit of despair, so thick it's almost physical. Luckily the effect doesn't spread. Uh, while I was coming and going out of sanity during the week, Marcus picked up some magical bard music. Just some simple stuff. Between my experience and his, I guess we can learn. There's hope for Alex yet, if he ever regained full functionality. The others, Amanda, Jason, and Mike, have been poking around and found out about some academy or university quite a distance away that may have some answers for us. They apparently have some info on extra planner travel. Might be a long shot, but it's all we got. Journal Entry 36 we need quite a bit of gold for travel expenses. Much more than we have. I signed up on another Dungeoneering expedition. Jason signed up as well. We joined up with a sorcerer and what I'm pretty sure was half the thieves guild pretending to be fighters. I didn't even know there was one. I suppose that's the way they want it. Apparently Jason is a pseudo apprentice to one of them. What the fuck? Anyways, we headed down to clear out some goblins and instead found a death cult. A dead death cult. They committed suicide somewhat recently. There was a goblin, just the one though, and he wasn't a feral. He wanted to join. Whatever. I'm not the leader of this expedition. He smells though. Jason managed to pick out a few traps and got a few pats on the head for it from his thief masters. And I'm pretty sure I got fondled at some point by every one of them while they were looking for my coins or something of interest. Suckers. I left it all with the others back at the inn. Overall load from the job. The pay was cut in half since there was no goblins. Loot off the cult was a handful of shitty quality daggers, a handful of coppers, and a magical idol none of us wanted to touch. We rigged up some wood tongs, bagged it, and sold it at the market for around 60 gold and some incense. We didn't pay the goblin. He can go fuck himself. Journal Entry 37 We all gathered up after I got my Kindle charged up and watched Strange Days. It was the only movie I had on it when I came, and the only movie any of us brought. It's a good movie, but when you've been living out on this world for a while, you notice the simple things. Oh look, they have proper shoes, and their clothes have functioning pockets. Hey, cars, and so on. There were some tears as homesickness kicked in full force, and then I picked up the overflow from the others. What the fuck was I thinking? I think that portal bullshit had a hypnotic effect or some limited mind control was used. The more I think about it, after what I learned. But why bring us? We're random people with similar interests. It doesn't make sense. Anyways, a bit after that I helped Jason with some B&E work his masters were requesting he do for the experience. Now I'm not the best person, and I admit I'd probably be doing it too if I didn't get caught up in the mental adventures of temporary insanity with Miss Bald and her skinhead friend, so I'm not even going to complain. I guess I'm sliding on down the alignment scale. Desperation. Real or imagined, I suppose. So my part in his heist was feeling out if anyone was inside, and then he does all the work. And I try and alert him if someone goes for the door. Alert, in my case, is to nearly knock him and myself silly. I'm still new at this. It's like painting with boxing gloves on. I'm not sure what the total haul was worth, but his masters paid him a handful of silver. I'm starting to wonder if this coinage really is gold, silver, and copper. Might just be what they call it, or maybe they're using a really impure mixture. I don't know. Not important, I guess. Journal Entry 38 so two trips into the dungeon, and I'm apparently a dungeoneering pro according to the locals. Seriously. So I was approached while trying to grift some tourists about another run in another section of the crypt. Apparently it's the right season that the water level down there drops enough to allow access to some otherwise inaccessible areas. 
Jason and his handler are coming along with what I think is a gnome who wants to examine the construction techniques and a tiefling chick who is armed to the horns with the whips. I'm going to have to get a torch for this. It's probably going to last longer than my flashlight's battery. Of course, I'm not experienced in making fire without a ladder. I'll figure it out. Maybe that's something else I can sell to the artificer. He's still working out the wonders of the ballpoint pen. Anyways, the expedition starts come sunrise. Journal Entry 39. Dungeoneering Pro My Ass. So we're all stuck in a big cylindrical room, about 15 foot in diameter and 20 foot high. I'll start from the top. We entered and immediately ran into a kobold scouting party that was seeing if the area was habitable for them. Why can't they just build a fucking town of their own? We managed to chase them off, found a few traps, got some custom bridges by a few and some minor burns from the extra fun time magical ones. I have to wonder why anyone bothers. It's only a matter of time before someone breaks through. All you're doing is wasting money on slowing down an inevitable intrusion. Not cost effective in the least. We found the previously flooded section and entered. Most of the traps here were disabled from water damage, except a few of the amusing surprise pits that were now filled with easily crossable water and silt. Picked up a few unknown gems and some random baubles and decorations. Our gnome friend took sketches of everything we saw, from walls to door archways. Very fast hands. Finally, we entered this room. There's a lever on a pedestal. Typical. The gnome seemed excited and walked right over and pulled it before we could check it out. The door slammed shut and that's how we got stuck in this room. The tiefling chick nearly broke her little jaw after the first hour. Everyone seems calm, but I can feel the panic. It's creating a kind of feedback effect. Not easy to ignore. Journal Entry 40. Still in the trap. Luckily, we're not expecting the area to flood again for a few months. So we're all sitting around and chatting it up. I got to regale everyone of the tale of the Quantum Lich, who was trapped in a similar situation and went on imaginary adventures. Jason and I had a good laugh about it. The others were... disturbed. So rather than sit around and wait for insanity, or death, we tore apart the lever mechanism which went inert when the trap sprung and applied some mechanical engineering to it. Some of the rope that made it work broke. We figure this room was a kind of airlock leading to another chamber. We managed to repair the mechanism using one of the tiefling's whips and tricked it into opening both doors with some luck. Ta-da. We took a vote and went further in. It's a good thing we did. While we didn't find mounds of gold and jewels, we found a small armory. Swords, daggers, and armor, all in good shape, untouched by the flooding and rust. We cleaned the place out and headed back topside. Our market contact is selling off the loot and we got paid. Looks like we got a nice little amount of coinage, and we all kept something from the loot. I traded in my shitty goblin short sword for a nice steel one. The gnome got his designs and seemed quite pleased. Around the bruises anyway. Journal Entry 41 Got caught up with the artificer today. He finished several prototypes of ballpoint pens, but couldn't get the right consistency with the ink. Chemistry, or alchemy as they call it here, is not his strong point, so he's working with someone on that. In the meantime, he's working out which is easier, bikes or razors. The razor has lots of fine points, but the bike has moving parts. I suggested a penny farthing style with the pedal mounted on the front wheel for ease. He's pondering it. I see many great business arrangements in her future, one thing at a time though. It's not like there's a patent office. Anything he figures out, anyone else can copy and there goes the profits. Learned a new trick. I can pull memories out of people now. It's very obvious that it's happening though and it's quite tedious and leaves me exhausted. In other news, someone tried robbing me in an alley. Not one of the sanctioned thieves, just some asshole. Gave him a mind full and then a face full of taser when that wasn't enough. I ended up taking his money, his pants, and one boot just to fuck with him. Journal Entry 42 The airship is in town today. Amanda is going to see about booking passage, or at least how much it is to their main stop, which is about halfway to that university. From there, well, we'll figure something out. We're all planning on going. We have to stick together. In the meantime, I'm experimenting with Mike and Marcus with some zap stone he picked up cheap at the market. It's magic, produces static electricity at what seems to be a constant rate. I think it's for wizard pranks or maybe simple traps. We're seeing if we can't use it as a faster method to recharge our batteries. My taser must be getting low, and it takes hours to charge my MP3 player. 
even longer for the Kindle, or Amanda's iPad using a solar charger, or that hand crank thing we got from Dan. Journal Entry 43. We have enough for the airship trip, but it's a no frills package and may be called upon to help move cargo around. We leave in two days. I haven't actually ever been on a plane, and here I am preparing for an airship ride. The trip should take 48 hours. Our experiments with the static stone didn't quite work out as well as we hoped. The electricity coming off of it is in fact very random. We would need to set up some kind of transformer or something, and I have no idea how to make one. Paid a last visit to Baldi. Why the hell did I do that again? I was a mindfuck with her. Literally. Also, she keeps wanting me to shave my head. The hell with that. She did give me some tips on memory digging that should help, but practice makes perfect. It's like a muscle. It needs to be used. Translation. I gotta mind rape people to get stronger. What the hell have I gotten myself into? Journal Entry 44. So here I am, standing on the deck of an airship, in aerodynamically improbable shape, propelled by magic. Fucking magic. As near as I can tell, it's a converted cutter with the sails removed and some magic propulsion added in. Some kind of engine powered by elementals or something. It's certainly not seaworthy anymore, as the bottom's been cut up into loading doors for cargo. Us Terrans are sharing a tiny, stuffy cabin, barely large enough for us all. We're sleeping on the floor, more or less. The ship is noisy, the wood constantly creaking from the movements. On deck is better, but we have to stay out of the way of the crew. The view is amazing, though. We're hauling ass over some plains, mountains and forests in the distance, passing over a few horse riders far below. They are navigating by a combination of standard ship navigation techniques, compass and sextant, combined with a magic map. Not too sure of the details on the map. Probably helps with their versions of latitude and longitude guesswork. Something is bothering me, though. I'm picking up a lot of apprehension in the crew. I let the others know, and we've been digging for info, but they're being tight-lipped. It doesn't seem directed towards us, though, so I don't think they're planning anything nefarious. Journal Entry 45. A day and a half out and blam, the ship crashes. Found out what the crew was worried about. They were transporting some creature. It got free and set the whole underside aflame. The ship's enchantments started breaking, one at a time. The captain managed to soft crash us. About four of the crew's total of 15 didn't make it. All us Terrans survived, but Mike has a broken arm, and the rest of us are pretty banged up. We're doing what we can to treat the injuries. Whatever it was in the below decks either died in the fire or died in the crash. We have a long trip ahead of us on foot. We're loading up with all the supplies that survived, and even managed to throw together a shitty cart to load up and transport the wounded. The area isn't exactly a haunted nightmare forest, but it's not exactly as safe as the ones back home, either. The captain, a fiery woman, seems to think we can make it to Winterfield in a week if we don't dawdle. My request for a discount on the travel price was, of course, denied. Whatever. As long as we all make it. We Terrans are a bit better off than when we did our first caravan, from Rosenbridge to Wild Lake. Journal Entry 46. So we're kind of lost in the woods. The tree cover is too thick to take sun measurements for navigation, so we're kind of guessing. We at least know the right direction between my and the captain's compasses. The woods are pretty quiet, which probably means predators, but I don't feel anything out there. Marcus occasionally breaks out the guitar to play something inspiring. He's getting better at it and is managing to combine some terror music with what I'm calling the bardic effects. It doesn't quite work right, so mostly we're hearing local traditional stuff. We've all been taking turns pulling the supply slash injury cart and pushing it when it inevitably gets stuck. A few of the crew are ahead, picking paths through the trees and looking for the best ground to traverse until we find some kind of road. The captain is certain there's an old trade road around here somewhere. We're zigzagging back and forth looking for it as we continue on to Winterfield. I tried climbing one of the trees for a better look, but didn't see anything other than more trees. So much green. According to the map, we should be in the woods for at least two days before we exit out, cut across some foothills, and enter the northern plains. The crew is pretty superstitious. They keep telling tall tales of dark elves kidnapping people to their caves living in the woods, or cannibal witches or druids powered on hatred in my favorite, the Woods Lich. He raises the dead as dryad tree warriors. 
I think it was all fun and games, but some of them are terrified by the prospect. It's like kids telling horror stories around a campfire to scare each other, except as grown men and women. Tonight, we're going to tell our version. We're going to convert Hellraiser over to something they can understand. Journal Entry 47. Well, we ran into wild, borderline, feral forest elves. I picked them up when they started shadowing us and called them out. They weren't hostile, but extremely distrustful. They barely spoke English. Common. But we did manage to get some directions out of them. They want us out of their territory as soon as possible. We're a change to the status quo, I guess. The whole thing could have gone a lot worse if one of the idiot crew were the first to approach and call them out. Fucking elves. I think Amanda has an elf crush to boot. My experience with them so far, in general, hasn't been all that good considering my time with Miss Baldy McMine rape. Anyways, by nightfall we hit the trade road. It was further east than the map said, and in pretty bad shape. It's been flooded out several times and is heavily overgrown, but it's a straight route, if not disused. Apparently, once the airship started moving cargo in days, which would have taken months, the whole thing just shut down overnight. I hope they can acquire a new one. I doubt they had an insurance policy on it. Journal Entry 48 We're camped out at the edge of the woods for the night, and we'll hit the foothills tomorrow. It should be easier going, but we don't exactly know what kind of dangers to expect. We all sat around and watched my Kindle copy of Strange Days again, including the crew. They obviously had no idea what was going on, but the pretty moving pictures kept them distracted from telling stupid horror stories. I just hope they don't decide to burn us as witches come morning. We also have been getting in some weapon practice during our woodland adventure. I'm not as clumsy as I used to be with the blade as when I first started. Mike's taken extremely well to his rapier. Journal Entry 49 We got attacked. Hyenas. Knolls and a few goblins. They initially charged in screaming, but gunfire sent them back. They continued with hit and run tactics for the rest of the day, and I'm down six more bullets. 48 rounds left. We lost a crewman, and the captain took a nasty gash across the arm and leg. She's riding in the cart now. None of us have any medical training. I don't know how bad the wound is, but she's out of the fight. If she takes fever, I'll give her a penicillin and hope she's not allergic. Took a few beatings otherwise and had to repair the cart, but we're okay. We captured a goblin and he's pulling the cart for now. Picked through the mortally wounded after the raids. Got to practice my memory harvesting skills. I know more about that Knoll tribe than I ever wanted to. And they all died in horrible agony. And I got a headache. I've come to realize... I'm becoming a horrible person. Was this something Mistress Skinhead McTattoo Face planted in my head, or is this just how I'm adapting to the situation? It must be adaption. I'm not the only one affected. Jason was laughing at their pain, and was cracking jokes about it for the rest of the day to freak out our goblin slave. Speaking of him, he doesn't speak common, so he named him Wendy. Overall loot from the attacks. A longbow and some nasty looking arrows. One of the crewmen knows how to use bows, so he took it. Journal Entry 50. Surprise! I'm apparently in charge of this whole expedition now while the captain is out of it. She's sleeping most of the time and the bleeding has stopped. Kind of. I don't even know when to change her bandages. Just when they look bad? We don't have enough material for a lot of them. No rotting smells though. Yet. So with the captain out of it and the first mate dead in the crash, somehow the chain of command falls to me. I think everyone's taking my secret, rampant, and unethical abuse of empathy as some form of leadership. Well, here goes nothing. No sign of the Null Party today, but we keep catching glimpses miles behind us. Probably scouts. I hope we're not being pushed into a war party. The hills aren't exactly giving us a clear view of everything. Too many places to hide, too much cover, so we travel on. We should hit the plains tomorrow. That may bring luck or more misfortune. What the fuck am I doing here? Journal Entry 51 No Knoll attacks. They stopped following us when we hit the planes. One of the crewmen started getting real jittery. One of the big dumb guys. When pressed, he clammed up, but that shit don't work on me. This trip is taking longer than expected, even with the crash. I figure we'll hit Winterfield in four more days. At least there's that to look forward to. Hopefully we won't all get arrested upon arrival. Or worse. This isn't even the end point in our little trip, just the midway. We'll have to find a new group to travel with to this university place. The plains are nice. We can see if something is coming unlike the foothills. 
The terrain is flat enough that we can make good time over the trade road. I'm sure there's some kind of horrible magic snake or dire rats hiding in the grass somewhere. <laughs> we'll see, I guess. The captain isn't doing much better, but stable. Bleeding stopped, but she has a temperature. I slipped her a penicillin. I hope this works. Is this even the right time to use them? It figures that we'd end up with no one with any form of medical training. I'm sure Mike's arm isn't going to heal right. We'll have to get him to a temple healer as soon as possible. Same with the captain, of course. Journal Entry 52. Found out what was bothering the big guy. Nomadic Barbarian Tribe. He's an exiled member, of course. Headed over to Winterfield and took up an occupation. I don't know what he was exiled for, but they're pretty pissed to see him, and us because we're with them. We managed to talk them out of killing us on the spot, and we're under their custody until they decide what to do with us. There's around 150 or so of them that I've counted so far. They move in a huge migratory loop around the plains, following the wildlife and weather year after year. We did manage to get their healer to assist with our wounded, so there is that. He's using a combination of some kind of magic healing and holistic medicine with lots of silly ritual that I'm sure isn't really part of it. At least I hope it isn't. From observation, I figured that their ancestors spirit worshippers, along with a sky god that may or may not be the same figure as the sun god in a different mask. It's hard to tell. I'm not about to announce my disbelief in the divine on this world, as things like that tend to go all wrong. Their young warriors dope up on some local plant life and visit the ancient grave sites, experience something, and then participate in a hunt. There's some kind of cannibalism involved as well. Their greatest warrior gets eaten when he passes, and the same goes for the medicine man and his replacement when the death comes. They don't seem to be experiencing the shakes, and is apparently a sin to eat anyone else, so I'm going to try and not be too worried. Journal Entry 53. The captain is back on her feet and thanked me for not fucking up too badly. And Mike's arm is doing better from the healer's treatment. That's the good news. The bad news is that after today's negotiations, we get to take part in the barbarian hunt. The worst news is that we're the prey on this hunt. We have a four hour head start. We're ditching the cart and carrying what supplies we can. It starts at sunrise. We have eight young warriors in the chase and some older ones just behind them in case they fail. We are not expected to survive. Mr. Exile is ready to accept his fate. I don't want to die tired. I won't. Not after all this. Journal Entry 54. Rained all day, and we ran. Rained into the night, and we ran. Didn't even know I could run this long. Desperation. Separated from the others, but I kept running. When sunlight came, one of those assholes was on my tail. They have fucking horses. Fucking cheaters. Nearly got trampled. He got off his horse to finish me. I let loose with everything. There's nothing left up there now. He's blank. I don't think he even knows what he is anymore. Can barely think. Bleeding from the nose. Dizzy. Hiding in the crevice. My legs were starting to lock up. Need to get moving as soon as possible. Journal Entry 55. Four bullets. Journal Entry 56. Met up with the others at night. Three crewmen are gone. Amanda's dead. Speared. We're taking a break. We can afford a short breather. Mike did something. He flipped the fuck out and started talking to thin air. And next thing I know, he's throwing around fucking black fire and took one down. Injured another. I think he made a deal. A warlock deal. He won't talk about it, but he's ashamed and terrified of whatever he agreed to. But fear of barbarian death overrode whatever that was. We'll talk about it once we get out of the situation. Journal Entry 57. We ran into a Winterfield guard patrol with the barbarians on the horizon. They pulled back and the guards had enough compassion to help us. We were escorted back to town and currently sitting in the tavern. I ache. Everywhere. Amanda's gone. Another one of us down. Dead on the side of the fucking road again. We're all dead quiet. The surviving ship crew and captain. We're numb. I'm not going to sleep well for a while. And Mike's seriously fucked up. He still won't talk about it. We're going to hold a memorial tomorrow for Amanda and the other crewmen. I didn't even know their names. I feel like I'm forgetting about something. Wendy! Whatever happened to that fucking goblin? We left him at the barbarian camp. He's, he's probably dead. Journal Entry 58. I keep waking up, thinking I have to start running. Or that there's a barbarian about to kill me. Or not sure where I am. This isn't good. PTSD, maybe? Fuck. We held a memorial for Amanda. 
Well, welcome to fucking Winterfield. It's a large city. Reminds me of medieval France and architecture. It's a bit chilly here, but it's farther north. The locals are a bit distant. Apparently the barbarians are a problem for the area, and the real reason why the trade road was shut down, and they switched to an airship. Well, I hope they can build another one. The local royalty is too fearful of sending an army out to hunt the fuckers down like dogs. No, he's fine with the way things are. Calls it balance from what I hear. As much as I'd like to settle down here for a while and recover, we can't really. We all agreed. The barbarians are set up to the southwest, and we need to move northeast. If we wait here too long, they'll move further up the migratory path and it'll be too late. We have very little money. Jason is checking in with the local thieves guild because that's apparently a thing he has to do now. I did some checking around and there's a caravan heading north to a town called Brightly. According to the map, we can get to the university from there. I'm starting to understand how this university thing works and why it's so far out. If you get there, you've proven yourself apparently. Too late to turn back. We'll take a week to rest, gather supplies, and then head out with the caravan. Where to get money? Looks like I'm back to tasting people in alleyways and helping Jason B and E. What am I doing with my life? Journal Entry 59. Those fucking barbarians. They dropped off the desecrated corpses of Amanda and the crew on the doorstep of town for all to see. They'll pay for this. For everything. Motherfuckers. They'll at least get a burial now. At least, there's that. I'm so fucking pissed I don't know what to do. I accidentally lashed out at a few people mentally. We just wanted to pass through, but those fuckers wanted to have their fun and now people are dead. Lives ruined. And for what? I don't know anymore. I don't know. Anyways. I helped Jason nick some items he can fence, and we'll see what else we can do to grab some money. Journal Entry 60. We didn't get as much as I'd hoped, so we're going to have to expand our horizons. This isn't really a town for adventurers, no nearby dungeons or anything, just asshole barbarians. Marcus is making some money, barding it up in the taverns at least. The people are too distrustful to be grifted easily. Mike is totally against the warlock magic show, and, and to be honest, it wouldn't be appropriate. I'm not exactly a criminal mastermind. We can always hold up a trade caravan. Say the one we're traveling with. That might be too many people though. We're not murderers and we're not bandits. We're just poor. Yeah, that's a great rationalization. I apparently have no moral issues with completely fucking over the locals. I think it's because I don't recognize them as us. We're Terrans. We're better than you. Mentality. I don't know what to do. I don't. I just don't know. Would I have been like this if we stuck around Rosenbridge? What happened with Alex and Avery? Or Ian? Max and Austin? Are they even still alive? I can't think. And my mind is starting to leak. I need... rest. And that's the end of part two. And part three is coming up next week. Thank you for sticking around and listening to this story. As well as giving your patronage to Neckbeardia. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, as well as click the bell icon so you know when the videos are released through the week. Additionally, be sure to comment down below. Tell us what you think. We do love feedback and look forward to the things you say. This has been Guard Bro, and I will see you next time. All those moments will be lost.